course, please. Thank you, Gordon. I think the topic of this panel is very, very appropriate. It deals with all countries of South and Eastern Europe, a region which is a crucial part of Europe's future. It is integral part of Europe. It has been always in Europe, within the Europe family. Therefore, the accession of all countries to the, of our region to the European Union is, is not only political, it's geographical and historical imper imperative. Without any doubt, the European Union is a future for all of us. The European Union, we must uh, recognize, has been very active in uh, Southeast Europe and Western Balkans for a number of years in an effort to sustainably contribute to the consolidation of peace, stability, democracy, security, and prosperity throughout the region. Therefore, I strongly support the view that cannot be security for the part of Europe without having security for all of the Europe. This is a clear le lesson that we know and learn from the history. In that regard, we believe the accession of the countries of the region uh, to NATO and uh, uh, we have countries like Croatia, Albania already, the remaining Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, Montenegro, I believe very soon will go that path and this would create and cover the gray area of uh, possible instability and we believe the accession of Bosnia and Herzegovina to NATO is a crucial and the utmost important for the citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It would give new impetus for developments and reforms in Bosnia and Herzegovina and we strongly believe and we'll do our utmost efforts to join Montenegro in the first cycle of MAP when we fulfill the conditionality on defense reform uh, uh, which has been uh, said in a high level ministerial meeting in, in uh, Tallinn. Today, the countries of South East Europe, Western Balkans are on the path towards integration into European community of political and economic freedom. Nearly every country of the Balkans has recently staked, take steps towards this uh, membership. But we always say that South East Europe faces many challenges, and I would partly agree with this statement and frankly speaking we are aware of all impediments of such kind many unresolved issues in the southeast europe balkans and other which are bilateral or nature or related to the status issue but at the same time i agree and uh, despite all set setbacks that we have there's tremendous progress as well hard to dispute uh, fact remains the countries were driven by EU reforms, EU determination to offer support to the integration process, and therefore the open door policy, which was uh, clearly mentioned during uh, and underlined during the uh, meeting EU Western Balkans uh, in Sarajevo on the June 2nd, is a message that is very appealing to the countries of the region. Because we believe that European Union has an indest indispensable role to play in encouraging these countries, commitment to the reforms, and by speaking with one voice, which is very important, on enlargement and by providing a clear path to our membership. We know all there's a still, still long way ahead we, of, before us, before the whole region is fully integrated into the core of European Union. However, it is important to keep the process going and promote the progress while the requirements undoubtedly have to be fully fulfilled. Uh, I have to say some particular issues on Bosnia-Herzegovina because uh, in the uh, preamble of this uh, panel it has been said that Bosnia-Herzegovina sh should be uh, kept in the EU mainstream. And, uh, we all know and we, uh, people around this table are very knowledgeable about the situation, that the complexity and limitation Dayton Constitution are one of the major issues why Bosnia and Herzegovina is lagging behind all the, all the countries in the region. 
Therefore, we are looking for stronger and decisive role for time being of the international community and the European Union above all in helping Bosnia and Herzegovina to overcome the shortcomings of our constitution and help us to create efficient decision-making process which is one of the major, major problems. I'm not saying that there are not others, some challenges, uh, but I'm not in, intending to go in, uh, into details today. But uh, let me stress one thing that there should be a carrot always, and uh, also a commitment given by uh, European Union when uh, particular visas are issued. We believe that any delay in visa uh, granting visa-free regime for Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Albania will be will have an effect on the whole all reforms. Regard, or wanted we or not, I think the it's my personal feeling maybe that we are losing some steam on this process. I'm afraid that we will be continue dragging the process beyond the fall, new year, and uh, so I would urge all those people, and uh, Michael is here who presented me a roadmap, and I clearly can say that uh, we fulfilled all the conditions, and I would ask once again European Union to honor its commitment to grant, grant, us, grant us visa. And one more thing which is also slowing the process is the possibility of Bosnia Herzegovina also to present its uh, application for membership. I believe that the, the position that Bosnia Herzegovina, as long as OHR is not there, is uh, creating a slowdown, is uh, something that is preventing Bosnia and delaying uh, further process of Europe, European accession to European Union. And uh, I urge that we find some way for uh, Bosnia Herzegovina to present that, uh, its application and to uh, not to lose the momentum and the path towards joining the joining EU. And at the end, uh, I, I, I believe that the future of Southeast Europe, with a word vision and with powerful term enlargement and fully integrated in EU and its diversity in all aspects, benefits to a community of values on peace and freedom, democracy and the rule of law, as well as a tolerance and solidarity in the world's largest economic zone. Having said that, I want to underline commitment of all citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina to those values. Thank you.